up like to take a look about the geometry of these uh, possible Nash arbitration points. So we solved with calculus for the Nash arbitration point given a status quo point of 1 comma 2 in the last video, but we have other situations. Um, so what about a situation like the following where we have the Nash arbitration point can go anywhere along the northeast boundary and there are multiple line segments. This would be a long calculus problem if we had to use each of these constraints, but it turns out that we don't. Let's take a look at the recommendation. So the idea is that if we just calculate the area at each vertex, so we let the Nash point go to each vertex and then we calculate those those areas and we're looking for the maximum and if we have a single maximum one of those vertices has a single has the maximum area when we create that rectangle with it and the status quo point if there's a single maximum then I just check both line segments that contain it and there are three endpoints I'm in a better situation if I happen to have a maximum area that's taken on by two different points. And by the way, there can only be two, not three or four, just two. And in that case, I only have to check the one line segment between them plus its endpoints. So understanding the geometry is of the payoff polygon is really going to assist us in speeding up our work. So let's just look at the situation here. If I calculate the area at C and I've chosen the status quo point for this part to be 0, 0. So the area of the rectangle is x minus 0 times y minus 0, which is just x, y. So I can just multiply the coordinates of c together, 1 times 10, to get the area. And at d, the area will be 36. And at e, the area will be 49. And at f, the area will be 36. I have a single maximum. so the geometry indicates that I only need to check the line segment DE and the line segment EF plus the vertices DE and F. If I do, and that will be very similar to what I did in part three of this video. So what happens if we change this payoff polygon? So what if E and F move a little bit and then E disappears because now this is a single line segment. So now I only have three line segments and notice that we have two points that have the same maximum area. In this payoff polygon, I have an area of 36 when N takes on either of these two uh, vertex values. So in this case, think about the fact that there's a parabola in here. Now it's not right here, but in the background there's some parabola going on, and that parabola has the same value of 36 at these two points, right? So a 36 here and a 36 here. That means that the maximum of that parabola um, is between them, right? Uh, this is a downward facing parabola and the only way you can have two similar y values is if the uh, vertex, a higher maximum area, is between them. So that's what's going on with the recommendation that when there's two points that create the same maximum area, then I only have to check that line segment that's between them. So let's take a look at what's happening in the um, in the other situation. So you have to understand the geometry of this payoff polygon, and it has to do with the fact that the payoff polygon is convex. And it also has to do with the fact that if I look at these equal areas, right, so along this darker dotted line that I just showed, right, every single one of those rectangles has equal area. So if uh, B and D have the same area, this, right, if I put N here, it has the same area as at D, so I'll show you that, right, so 54 and somewhere close to 54 there, I can't quite get it centered on that dot. Right. So every single one, uh, if I if if N could go along this uh, dark dotted green line, all of those rectangles would have the same area. 
their lengths and widths would be different, but their area would be the same. So let's think about this, right? Um, what happens as I move D, okay? Um, so this is the original situation, the original problem we've already solved where the maximum occurred here was 112, right? And everything along here was smaller, right? Um, but you can see as I move D, the area is getting bigger. As I move D, the area gets bigger and you can see now it's grown above the maximum we found before. So I can move, I can have a situation where this uh, maximum value happens inside the line segment CD. And we have a, uh, a problem that we're, let me move this back to eight. Oh, and let me show you the, uh, the level curves, the equal area curves, right? So now we have a situation <clears throat> where we have two maximum values, right? So now the area over at D, and again, I can't quite get it lined up there exactly, um, but when these areas are the same, right? The maximum has to occur inside this interval. All right, um, but the example that I have um, in the slides is where that um, D is right here. Let me get rid of this. <clears throat> and we're going to try to find a maximum area. Well, the maximum here is still at the endpoint 112. And so now we're looking to see what's happening. And you can see that right around that between 12 and 13, there is a maximum. It looks like it's 132 point something. Uh, and you can see it. So I'll put the I'll put the X value right around 12 and a half, and you'll see why in just a moment. So now we're looking at the situation where I've changed the old point D to the new one. And here's just an example that you can work through on your own. I've got the outline of it here. This is the line that would contain both C and D. And this is what you get when you plug into the area equation and simplify. We're going to take that derivative, set it equal to 0, right, which is going to be a minus 2x plus 25. So when you solve for that critical value, setting that equal to 0, you're going to get a critical value of 12 and a half. When we plug that in, we're going to get a maximum area of 132 and a quarter, which was larger than the endpoint C example. So taking that, um, knowing that the maximum area occurred there, um, that's how we find the x value of the Nash point and then we plug it into the line segment equation to figure out what the y coordinate is and that is the new Nash arbitration point if we switch um, to a new point for D. So there's a there's an example you can work through. Hopefully the dynamic figures have helped you understand the geometry and what's going on because it is simple to do these problems. They're optimization problems, but you need to know which vertices to use and which line segments to use as constraints or it will take far too long. In the next part, we'll take a look at how to create an optimal threat matrix.